Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is In the Studio, episode 91. Today, I will be showing you how to create a rumbling techno bass. Um, now, when I think of that style bass line, I usually think of filtered percussion. Um, obviously, there's more ways to accomplish that style bass line, um, but that's the route I'm going to take today. So, let's dive right in. Um, I have a couple samples picked out that I want to try out. So, I have this kick here, I have this bongo conga, and this uh, like big drum hit. And let's uh, let's make a bass line out of this. So first thing I'm going to do is start with the kick here. Um, let's send this to the piano roll. I'm just going to lay down a very simple pattern over one bar. Okay, that will work. And now I'm going to give this a filter envelope here. So I'm going to hop over to modulation X tab. I'm going to pull the filter all the way down and we're going to control it with a envelope. And I'm going to turn the filter type to a low pass times two, um, which is a, uh, I believe a 24 dB slope rather than a 12 or six which is what this one is. Okay, so what we're gonna do is pull this in, pull all these in, pull up the, the amount, and I'm gonna push out the decay. Okay, that's fine. And let's move on to the bongo conga hit here. So this obviously needs to be pitched down. So I'm gonna pitch this down two octaves. Okay, and let's pretty much just fill in the gaps here. That's what I'm gonna do. And now on this one, I'm going to pitch this down one octave. And let's just send this in. I'm just going to put this here at the end of the phrase. But what I'm going to do is give this one a filter envelope as well. So head over to the Mod X tab. I'm just going to stick with the fast low pass on this one turn the filter all the way down. Let's control it with this envelope. We'll do the same thing that we did last time. I'm going to pull all these in, pull the amount up a little bit, and then play with the decay and the, and the amount. And on this kick here, I'm going to pitch this down actually one semitone, I think. Yeah. Okay. So we have a little groove going there. What I'm going to do now is do a little bit of work on the bass. So. I have all three of those percussion hits going over to this bass bus here. So the first thing I'm going to do is filter this right down um, with the Moog multi-filter. You can use an EQ for this, you can use whatever filter you want. I just really like this filter, um, so that's what I'm going to use. I'll 
probably going to filter it a little bit further down, but for right now, I'm going to leave it a little bit more open. And let's add a little bit of distortion to this as well. I'm just going to use the wave shaper here. I'm going to give this a little boost just like this. You can hear it without it. Just beeps it up a little bit, gives it a little bit more body. And now um, I'm going to give this a little bit of reverb actually. But what I'm going to do here is throw on Fruity Reverb 2. I'm going to pull the reverb mono though. Um, and then I'm going to pull the decay right down as well to the smallest setting possible, which is 0.1. And this is just going to give the bass a little bit of sense of dimension and space without muddying things up because the decay is all the way down and the reverb is actually mono. And then I'm just going to tickle a little bit of uh, mix in here. Pull it up so you can hear the effect. With it, without it, and with, yeah, maybe just like 10% or so. Cool. And now what I'm going to do is give this a little bit of groove with some delay. I'm just going to use Fruity Delay 2, keep it simple. And I'm going to go for a 16th delay here. And um, yeah. Let's... I just pulled that down a little bit. Okay. Pull down the input on the delay because I, I don't want it too intense, just a subtle, subtle groove. Okay. And then I'm going to compress all these uh, percussion elements together a little bit with the 1176. Um, so there's a, a nice preset here that I like to use sometimes. It's called the Gentle Bass Comp. And then I'm just going to dial in the input and the output. That's way too much compression there. I'm going to give this a little bit of side chain as well. And I'm just going to use Kickstart for the video here. And Okay, so that's the base uh, sorted for right now. I'm gonna filter this down a little bit more. Maybe add a little bit more drive. And you could even try in the piano roll giving some of these 16th notes some swing. I'm just going to leave it straight right now. Um, but that's something that you could do if you wanted to make it a little bit more groovy. Um, just going to, yeah, just a little side note. So when making a bass line like this, um, 
I find it beneficial to bus the kick and the bass together and then do a little processing on both of them just to make them a little bit more harmonious and, and kind of uh, glue them together as just one like solid you know unit. Um, so I have my bass bus here with all these three percussions going to this bus. I have my kick playing on this track and both of those are going to the kick and bass track here. So let's do a little bit of work on the kick and bass track. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of um, saturation. I'm just going to go for the Studer A800 tape machine. So let's uh, dial this in. You can hear there that it definitely gives a little bit more body to the low end um, and it, it takes a little bit of the top away from the kick as well, which I don't mind at all. And then I'm going to add a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, compression here. And for this, I'm, I might try the DBX 160 actually. It's a very simple compressor, um, but it it's, works great. Um, so I'm going to dial back the compression amount. So yeah, there you go. That's um, how I would approach, or at least one way I would approach making a rumbling, kind of rolling uh, techno bass using percussion. Um, so yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please leave me a comment or question. Always love to hear from everyone. And I will see you very soon, so take care.